when I listen closely and I go really quiet and still, I can hear her voice whispering in my body. My lips form a soft smile, my heart buzzes with a warm tingling sensation and my womb pulsates with tiny pleasurable contractions. This is how the big she makes herself known to me. She is present in all women. Every woman carries the seed of wisdom of her own big she, and every woman is guided by her. This is my story of surrendering to her voice and trusting the guidance that comes from within. And I hope that it may inspire yours. So I'm the kind of woman who has a million different dreams and desires. My mind is like wide open and I'm constantly drawing in new experiences and ideas. And sometimes that can take me down some unusual roads. Like the time when I lost all my life savings to a con artist, only to receive it back six times as much two months later from an unexpected inheritance. Or the time when I first read about Kundalini awakening and I thought, gosh, I need this. And six months later, I'm lying on the floor of a workshop room with a man dressed entirely in black, hammering away on the base of my spine until my body jolts back and forth in snake-like movements. I can't sink anymore because there's just too much bliss going through my body. All the time I got so excited about plastic-free living that I honestly considered relocating from Stockholm to Berlin just so I could live close to the city's first zero waste store. And then three years later, I'm living in that exact same building that hosts that shop. Like flats in that neighborhood go like hot pastry. Like I could never have planned for that. Coincidence? Maybe, but I don't really believe in coincidences. I believe in miracles. And I believe in the one who makes those miracles go round for all of us every day. And I call her the big she. She is who you really are, an expression of your true self as pure, unconditional love. Throughout the world in different traditions, she's also known as the Holy Spirit, or the Shekinah, or the womb wisdom. She is the feminine face of Christ, pure life force energy, and the bridge between the human realm and the mind of God. She is your inner guide back to love and the eternal remembrance of home. Her job is to guide you through your life experience and she always holds your highest good in mind. The more you surrender to her, the more flow you will experience. I remember one night late in January, 2014, I'd recently broke up with my partner of four years. And along with it, I had lost my home, my relationship, my identity, everything. I was renting a tiny room from a friend in the suburbs outside of Stockholm until I'd find my own place. I tried to take my life coaching business full time, but I didn't make enough money, so I was moonlighting as a German teacher. I was wondering what I was doing with my life. At age 30, I was single, homeless, and broke. Most of my friends were in long-term relationships, buying apartments, and having established careers. I had none of that, and I felt like a total loser. But then I remembered to ask my big she for help. Because unless we ask, spirit will not interfere with our God-given free will. So I went into child's pose and I prayed. Palms stretched out in front of me on that purple flocati rug. I told her about my longings. I shared my longing to go full-time in my coaching biz. My desire to leave Sweden for a warmer English-speaking country the wish to find a committed partner and get married and to make all my writerly dreams come true and pen a book with spirit. 
I held nothing back. And then I surrendered all these desires to her. To me, they seemed so unattainable, I might as well have just tried to fly to the moon. I had to rely on a power much greater than my own if I were ever to watch those dreams come true. But come true they did, one by one, it all unfolded before me. First, I met the man of my dreams on Facebook. Turns out he had been following my work for years. I was blogging for my t former Tantra school at the time, and now a project that came to me through surrendering to my inner guidance. And he loved my articles so much, he even sent one of them to his guy friend saying, we shall never give up until you find a woman like Nadia. <laughs> so yeah, after I'd broken up with my ex-boyfriend, the ex suggested I would advertise for a new practice partner in our Tantra community. So I did that, and then when Daniel, my now husband, saw this post, he got so excited, he replied within 10 minutes. Long story short, we fell in love and got married six months later. Now, the official reason for just getting married was that his company had offered to relocate him to New York City, an opportunity he just couldn't turn down. And he invited me to join. So we filed for our visas. I was fine, I was happy, but there was still something like this longing for more romance in my heart. And I think that deeper reason was that strong desire to stop dating and to finally get married. So I hadn't told any other human being, but in my heart, my, my big she knew what I was longing for. So she did her magic behind the scenes. So what happened is that during that same summer, we went to an hour tantric party. And during one night, one of our friends, a Christian priest, was speaking about the deep meaning of marriage. For centuries, people in Sweden had followed the tradition of marrying under a candle, so symbolizing the light of God. So instead of getting married to each other, they would marry to God, bowing beneath the light and devoting their marriage to become a vessel for his will on earth. This brought Daniel to tears. Back home, he went on his knees and asked if I wanted to marry him for real. Of course I did. <laughs> the romantic part of me was giddy with joy. So soon after that, I quit my teaching job and he stepped on the plane to New York City. And I could finally focus all my energy on my coaching business. <laughs> I worked with female founders. I gave talks for over 80 women on a different female orgasms, seven different female orgasms, and went to rooftop parties and fancy penthouses. I had the time of my life. I loved New York. And then, in the blink of an eye, it was all over. One evening, Daniel called from the office. He'd just gotten laid off. Their startup was acquired and going through massive restructuring. And along with his job, our visa had expired too. We had two weeks to leave the country. With nowhere to go, he accepted my parents' generous offer to move into their then empty house in Germany. Once again, I felt so stuck. Having lost all my confidence, I worked part-time for a cosmetics chain store alongside women who started bullying me for not fitting into their worldview. I felt like I was back in my childhood. But then a friend reached out from Norway, telling me that she just started receiving messages from her spirit guides about writing a book on female sexuality and spirituality. And she asked me if I wanted to co-create that book with her. Well, hell yeah, I did. Writing a book inspired by Source had been a dream of mine ever since I first read Neil Donald Walsh's seminal Conversations of God series. I love these profound teachings, healings, and insights that came through while creating this body of work. It really helped me regain my balance after the traumatic loss of our lives in New York City. 
Nine months later, which I now jokingly refer to our time in the womb, we left that house and moved to Berlin. So again, we ended up in that same building that hosts that zero waste store that I was so obsessed with years before by just things working out randomly. <laughs> I had not planned for this. So I'd finally gotten my mojo back and I was just in the middle of filming my online course, Self Love for Conscious Entrepreneurs, which basically helps women to connect to the voice of their own big sheep. When a friend told me about a sacred medicine journey he'd just been through. So this strong wood is a, um, this sacred wood is a strong plant medicine used in Vritti initiation ceremonies in Africa. And when he told me that, I instinctively knew that it was time for me to surrender to her power again and work with the medicine. So I reached out to that medicine woman, we booked our retreat and she came to Berlin and, and I set an intention. And my intention really was to let go of all the old blocks and limitations that were still holding me back on some level so I could expand and coach and teach at a higher level and helping even more women in my business. But as it is so often the case of surrendering, nothing unfolds according to our ego's expectations. On the contrary, life gets so much better. Regaining waking, waking consciousness a couple of days later, I had suddenly lost all interest in things coaching and personal development. Instead, I found myself drawn to books and courses on marketing, copywriting, storytelling, all of that. This change of mind was on such a profound and cellular level that there was just no turning back. So it soon became clear to me that I needed to let go of my coaching business to become a copywriter. Today, I'm experiencing more fun and flow than I've ever had in my entire career. Saying yes to that call of becoming a full-time writer is one of the best decisions I've ever surrendered to. Like all the decisions guided by my big sheep. Thank you.